Hello and welcome to another video on Inkscape. In this video I want to take a look at how we can flow text around an image. I'll also quickly show you how you can create this simple border. Stick with us. So I've imported this image into Inkscape. Now I want to add some text to it that flows around the shape of this stone head from Easter Island. So for us to be able to flow around the outside of this um, stone head, we need to have a path that describes where this stone head is. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to come over and grab our paint bucket fill tool. I'm going to increase the threshold at the top up to 30. I'm then going to come down and I'm just going to, with my mouse button held down, I'm just going to draw around inside the stone head so we can select the different uh, colors to fit into our range. So that should do me. If we release, it creates a path. Now, since we're only using this side, let me just change that. So I'm going to hold down Shift and select a red stroke, and then we can get rid of the fill color just by clicking on the X. So as you can see, at the moment, we've got lots of little bits and bobs inside. So one way we can get rid of those is if we come over, grab our selection tool, we just come up to path, down to break apart. So that breaks it into individual paths. We can then come back up to path and down to union. And that should union them all together. So we get rid of lots of these little odds and sods. So that's done a fairly good job of finding the edge of our stone head. I'm just going to pause them for a second. So I've just watched this back and if you're new to Inkscape you might find this this method of using the paint bucket tool overly complicated. So this is a much simpler way you can use to create a path around your stone head or what, whatever image you're using. So all we're going to do is come over, grab the Bezier tool over on the left hand side and then we're just going to click and drop points. So we just go around clicking around the outside of our path. It doesn't have to be too exact because we're only using this as a um, guide to flow our text to. So just work your way around until you've got as much done as you need to do. Because we're only using the face edge of this stone head, we don't have to be too exact on the back, so we can ignore that. And then you need to come back, hover over the start node till it turns red and click on that and that will complete your path. And that will give you a path that's just as suitable to use as the one that I've created using the paint bucket tool. Right, back to the original video. So the next thing we want to do is just offset it. What I'm going to use for offsetting is I'm going to come up to path and I'm going to come down to dynamic offset. This is just a, a very nice and easy way of adjusting how much you, you want the offset to come out. So we can just offset this slightly to wherever we want it to go to. So I think that's about how far out I want the offset. Now because we're using dynamic offset we do need to come in and click on path object to path to turn it into a path in its own right. We seem to have gained some some of these little um, internal paths again so I'm just going to use the same trick and come up to path down to break apart when I can find it. Then I'm going to come up to path and down to union, union them all together and that get rid of all the little bits and bobs that are inside. So that's where we want our text to flow to. We need to create the rest of our box now over this side. So to do that, I'm just going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw out a rectangle where I want the text to be. I need to overlap our outline of our stone head. So I reckon about there. Now I want to chop this section out of our rectangle. To do that, I need to have the outline of our stone head on top of the rectangle. So if we get our selection tool, we can select our outline for our stone head and then we can just raise it to the top clicking on this button at the top here. If we then hold down shift, select the rectangle then we can come up to path and down to difference and that will cut away that path from our rectangle. So now we've got an area that we can fill with text, we need some text to put in there. If you're actually doing this for real you'd, you'd obviously have text that you can fit in. I haven't got any text so I'm just going to use a handy little extension that we've got at the top here. I'll deselect, click on extension, come down to text, come down to lorem ipsum and this is just an extension for generating some space holding text. So what have we got? Number of paragraphs. 
we'll perhaps increase that to 2, 16, yeah that'll do me I think. So we just stick with that and press apply and this will generate our text. We can get rid of that now and over to the side we have some text that we can use to put into our text box. So I'm going to select the text, I'm going to hold down shift, I'm going to select our frame that we're going to use and then we can come up to text down to flow into frame and that puts our text inside our frame. If we just move it over to this side a little bit there's, there's two ways we can adjust the size of our text. We can either come up here to uh, the button for our text and font dialog box. We can open up our text and font dialog box down here and we can adjust the font size. To do this we have to come in here. We can change the size of the font then press apply and that will change the font size or a more dynamic way of doing it. We we'll press control Z to back step so we're back to where we were. Another way we can do it is if we click off we're going to select the frame, we're going to hold down shift, select the image so they're both selected. Now what we can do is adjust the size of those so we'll hold down control to constrain the proportions and then we can just move that in and as we move it in we can see so our text is slowly filling up more of the area. So when it fills it how we want it we can leave it like that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Another way we can adjust its appearance is if we click off we can come over we can select our text then we can click on our text tool and at the top here we've got um, text alignment so if we click on this we get a little drop down menu of different ways we can align our text. So at the moment we've got it on left justified. We could make it fill the gap completely. We could centralize it. So you can you can play with these different ones and see see what suits your needs. So I'm going to stick with left justified. So now I've got the text in there. We need to get rid of this outline. One way we can do is convert the text into a path. If you want to convert the text into a path with the text selected we can come up to path and down to object to path. The only thing is if we do this our text is no longer editable. So I'm not going to use that option. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to go to object, down to objects to open up our objects dialog box. So in here we've got all the different elements of our project. The rectangle object here will be our frame. So all I'm going to do is toggle the visibility of our frame. So we do that it makes our frame invisible and our text is still editable. So now we've got our text how we want it. We need a title so I'm just going to give it a quick title so we can get the text tool. Come up the top we can write Easter, Easter Island. We we'll shrink that down to suit. So I'm going to hold on the control to constrain proportions. We we'll shrink that down so it's a nice size for our, our project. We can bring that in. So in the example I showed at the beginning we also had a little frame that just went around the outside of our page. So to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the rectangle tool, making sure that our snapping is enabled. We want snapping to boundary boxes enabled and snapping to boundary box corners enabled. We can then come up here and we can just drag out a box over the top of our page so it, it sits on the page exactly. We can then get our selection tool, hold down control, use the open brackets uh, button on number 9 and we can just step that in a bit till it's where we want it and that will give us our outline. I'll change the colour of that so I'm going to hold down shift we just change it to black for now. So we've got a border but what I want to do is just chop out this section at the bottom so it looks like it stops at our uh, Moai or stone head. To do that I'm just going to get the rectangle tool again and I'm just going to draw a rectangle comes either side. Let's zoom in a little bit we can't really see what we're doing can we? So I've drawn a rectangle here that just sits either side of the Moai. Now I want to remove this section so to do that what I do is hold down shift let's get my selection tool. I hold down shift select the other rectangle and then I'm going to come up to path and I'm going to come down to cut path. What that's done is sliced our original path into two sections. So if we click off we can click on this section here and just drag it away and then we can press delete. And that completes our example. I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.